Hey everybody, it's Carlos again at Mortals Inc. Podcast. I got Mike on the recording device. Yep, recording device in the got, 21st century. I got Travis with me again from the Grumpy Wizard. Grumpy Wizard blog. Grumpy Wizard blog. And today we're going to talk about a very heavy volume, which surprisingly this is the last one I had on the shelf. I had to go pull it <laughs> up. So I got to order some more of these. But the Dungeon Crawl Classic uh, put out Dark Tower, which is, they did it. They did two versions. They did the... 5e 5e and the dcc version right this is actually the one i have on the shelf is the i think that's dcc right? yeah this is a dcc one the 5e one i sold out so i'm gonna get some more but it's got three volumes there's a nice slip case this is number seven in there uh yeah they do advantage. they've done a bunch of those, those original reincarnated line which have you seen the price of the out of print they're crazy uh they're crazy priced yeah crazy. i have i have the grim tooth book that like the big it's nuts. What yeah, those the, go for. the four, the first four of these. Yeah, I had like first four of them. I just put them on as a lot, and mm -hmm. bam, like on the collector sites I'm on, and uh, a lot of money. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not printing them anymore, so I no. guess so. No, <laughs> but they're printing this one for sure. So, Travis, what's this all about? So, Dark Tower. This is a classic adventure that was written in originally written in 1979 and published by one of the very few third-party publishers that had a license from TSR, the original owner of D&D, the creator of D&D. Mm. Uh, they were one of the few companies that had a license to produce licensed product with that said Advanced Dungeons and Dragons on the cover. It was a big, de it was a a big, big deal, deal back then. Yes. It, because, was, it was like, what? Yeah, it was, it, was not, it was just not a thing that was done. Um, and, and Judges Guild put out a lot of, I think, some of the most interesting product from those first years. They did other stuff, too. They did oh, Traveler. they did a bunch of stuff. Traveler. They did no, other no games. that was GD, uh, GDW yeah, did that one. I think Judges Guild. Eh, maybe they might I'm have, wrong. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I could be wrong. Some, yeah. Somebody will correct me for sure, but go ahead. <laughs> Gary will. Yeah, Gary. Gary Mingle. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what are you, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, so Dark Tower was written by the late Janelle Jaquez, who just uh, passed away last year. And this was rated in Dungeon Magazine as one of the top 30 adventures of all time. Back wow. when Dungeon Magazine was ever, was still being produced. Dungeon Magazine was cool. I, um, I hate to go on a rant on that, but I'm going to talk about that one day. But man, it, I wish I'd bring that back. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, and, it, it, and it was one of the few modules not published by TSR that was on that list as well. Yeah. Uh, a thing that was really fascinating about this is it, it really did some things structurally with the dungeon design that I'd like to talk about that I think were not, was not anything that was done really prior to that. Um, and, and it has rarely been done since then, which I find very puzzling considering we're, 45 years down the road after that, it, that people haven't, more people haven't studied that adventure. More designers haven't studied that adventure and sort of incorporated some of the elements of it. Uh, so the main thing, one of the things that's, it's very coherent thematically. Uh, it features two cults, the cult of Mitra and the cult of Set. Love cults. Who are uh, fighting each other, uh, trying to recover artifacts and holy sites because the basic setup was there was a tower of Mitra where there were uh, it, the heroes of the, of the religion were giving out their blessings. And then somehow the Setians or Set himself uh, produced a dark tower and basically teleported it within a close proximity to the tower of Mitra. And then in the magical fight that happened, there was a big landslide that basically buried both of the towers. And then they became a big dungeon. That's kind of a cool. Idea. And then 300 years later, the adventurers show up and, <laughs> and, and, and break it. <laughs> and there's there's a bunch of interesting um so there's a there's a surface level village where there's weird stuff going on uh there's a 
time stasis where all the village, most of the villagers are like 300 years old. And there's a, some people that aren't, uh, apparently are not who they say they are or claim to be. So um, if you stop right there, this is a story I'd like to either read or watch. Yeah, you know it's cool. Saying? Yeah, it sounds it's a like, great. I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. This is a TV series. It's going to go number one. <laughs> so, so you have this very number two. thematically, you have this very coherent setup for the situation. Uh, Excellent idea. Like that's a that is a good background for an adventure, though. Right. To say, hey, we're going to go in here because that would be something you see it all the time in movies, like kids, like. We're going to go adventure here. And then there's this huge background already for it, not just right. a hole in the ground where you just go down. Right. And yeah, you just got weird stuff going on on the surface level, like you said. But so. anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. And so the motifs of, this, of the the monsters that she chose, the uh, way the NPCs are described, the kind of powers they have, the weapons they have, the magic items they have, all that is very consistent and coherent across sort of thematically with this setup. Um, and it's really complex. There's a lot of interactions in here. So there's uh, NPCs who are just sort of like innocent bystanders per se that are just trying to stay out of the crossfire. And you can, the character, the players can interact with those characters in a social way and get information or get a key or find out about a particular part of the dungeon. There's, magic items there's artifacts where if you get certain artifacts it allows you into certain parts of the dungeon that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get into there's how long ago was this written 1979 Sounds like a video game almost yeah well interestingly enough janelle ended up became becoming a level designer in video games and worked in the video game game industry all right for most i would say a lot of <laughs> her career yeah, okay yeah uh, okay um, go on <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean things that you go but that sounds like oh that's because she yeah, actually yeah. took what oh, yeah, she yeah, came yeah, yeah, yeah. up yeah. with and brought it into video games yeah. and brought it into yeah, jacqueline wrote um, that <laughs> right uh so it's and it's very dynamic the, the situation isn't so a lot of times you get a, a, a lot of dungeons where you go in and you kill a monster in this room and then if you if you're running that if that dungeon is so big that you can't run it in or uh, a single session or player characters have to go back to the surface and come back that room stays the same this is not like that things you do one thing and that ch changes the situation in the dungeon so it is a little bit of a challenge for the re for the referee to sort of stay on top of that i like that already because i try to do that myself like right. oh we're going to stop here and then leave it doesn't mean everybody down there. You just kill the whole bunch of like right. people. You're not gonna. They're not gonna be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they just keep on their way. You know. In different rooms, you know, if something happens in this room over here, the next door rooms are keyed to say, hey, this. They come over here and do stuff um, to help or out. Traps, traps right. reset. Traps Somebody resets, resets a trap. Right. Yep. If it's a yep. if it's an active like environment, then yeah, it would be. You know. Uh, and there's fat. Yeah, you know, there's factions within the dungeon. So the diff so players can ally with one faction or the other faction and do different make different choices based on how that works out. So there's not just it's not just going through and slashing and killing everything. It's oh wait a minute, maybe we want to talk to this guy before we go pulling our swords out because there's prisoners, there's other there's there's other it's like a whole non player characters that are not even part of the two main factions that or are victims of one of the factions that you can interact with in ways that changes the way that the adventure plays. So a, a term that was uh, invented by a blogger um, and gets tossed around in the old school community a lot is JKzing the dungeon. So just the structure of the dungeon map, just the layout of it is different than a lot of other dungeons so there's a lot of inter there's multiple connections between levels connect the surface connects to level two and then it might connect to level three but not level two but two might connect to five as well as four so you have interlevel vertical connections between levels and then you also have uh rooms and uh areas that 
are connected by multiple routes. So you could, if you have 10 rooms, you don't go through the rooms one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're not set up so that the natural progression is one through ten. You might go through two and then three and go, oh wait, but what's over here in room seven? Because it's connected it's the not, way they're connected up. And not. so you might go through the adventure that I play, or if I run it and you run it with two different groups, it might be very I mean other than that the monsters and the NPCs and all of those things are the same, but the way it goes could be very, very different because they take a different path. They make different choices with different factions and NPCs. It's just, I'm so, sorry. so that you have a very different emergent outcome. It's a story. Yeah. Well, it's an, well, it's, it, it, it's not a scripted story with a definite set series of linear, it's linear, linear encounters. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an emergent narrative that emerges out of it's, we don't have any clue how this is going to play out when we with start different endings. Well, there's effectively infinite amount of possibilities okay. because I mean, obviously you would want, the, the characters would want to recover all the artifacts and kill the big bad guys at the end. But how that happens between entering the town and finding out what's going on. Or if it happens. Or if it happens, right. Or maybe they decide to join with the bad guys and um, create a new era of darkness across the land. I mean, you those all those things are possibilities the way this was written. Cool. Which is so it's it's worth the pickup. Oh, it has absolutely. To be. I'll be honest. Absolutely. I got quite a few of these, and literally this is the last one. And it's this one has it's one hundred nine ninety nine. So it's one hundred ten bucks. Yep. And if I sold out like that, it's got to be good. Yeah, yeah, there's three books in there, right? Yeah, yes, volume, three books, three slipcase, and Goodman Games produces heavy duty, great quality product. All the yeah, they've they they get great, uh, so great kinda, illustrators, great cartographers. I mean, the, cover the writing alone, I is, mean, is clean. The front of this book alone, you, you probably put a bigger The bedazzling picture. on that. Yeah, the, the bedazzling on yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, there's kind of a joke among, in the DCC the community that you, could, that you could put a DCC book on your nightstand and use it to beat off um, burglars in the night <laughs> yeah. because they're such heavy duty. <laughs> no, products. they are. I was going to say, these are things you throw in your book bag and you don't worry about it. Right. You know, like, oh, I'm going to travel. You know, like, yep. you don't have to worry about it. And they're just solid because they're just old school guys. Does yeah. it have any correlation to Return to Dark Tower? No, no. It's a different. That's a different. Thing. Don't you say that? No, I'm kidding. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, I now I kind of want to read it. I never. Yeah. Had, I never read it when I was younger because, like, I could barely afford games as it was. Seventy seven. You know, I was mm -hmm. what seven. So then, by the time I started buying games, like twelve or whatever, uh, like eighty two. Man, they uh, it was hard enough just to get the yep the core books or any like module that I wanted. It was might have, might as well have been a million dollars, but to actually get the extras, I never had a chance to get the the judges guilds or the the FASA or all those all those things I collect now that I can you know yeah. afford. I'll never play them, but I just <laughs> mm, it's in my grubby little hand. But yeah, this seems like something. Man, I kind of want to kind of want to read it. It's pretty incredibly written for sure. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But well, thanks Great. for coming in and talking You're about welcome. this. We have this on the show. Uh, we have this one on the shelf right now, but I'll get more. <laughs> and uh, like I said, $109.99, but apparently worth it. Yep. Because it sells out fast. Thank you again for Travis for coming in. Thank you, Grumpy Travis. Wizard. If you're what is it? Grumpywizard.blog? Or yeah, it's right in the description of this video and our last video. Our last video, if you're looking for more sandboxy stuff, Travis actually just published his brand new Hogwater, The Secret Village, or The Village of Secrets. Mm -hmm. We just did a review on that, so check that out. And um, until next time. Bye. Thanks.